what kind of house do I build? Do I yep. build a you know the insane thing of a starter house that's two hundred and fifty thousand know, dollars yeah, now, depending, on where, yeah, depending yeah. on where yeah. you're at, or do you build a five hundred thousand dollars house, mm-hmm. which is more profitable? Yep. So that dictates what gets built, and so I think the next big big boom is going to be in multifamily. And I think you're kind of already seeing that. Oh yeah, like new new builds yeah. in the multifamily. Yeah, you start yeah, looking at sense. apartment complexes that are being built, and because I think that's where builders are forecasting what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's going to be cheaper to live in an apartment than it is in a that's house. Smart. So let's build yeah. a lot of apartments. Okay, guys, um, episode fifty-one, yellow color glasses. Um, so today we have a really cool guest. I've been. Um, very excited to have on uh talk to him we got to know each other over the past probably what six seven eight months here um and it's been a lot of fun but uh before we get started we're gonna do our review read our review real quick for one amounts agency so wanted to thank eric d jake so eric says jake and his team did an outstanding job of walking me through my coverages helping me with the right protection for me and my family it's extremely difficult finding an insurance professional you can trust let alone a whole group of them this team is extremely genuine and you can tell that they have passion for helping others can't recommend them enough thank you eric appreciate that man um reviews as everybody knows that goes a very very long ways for us um especially with everything that we do in the agency here so thank you guys so much for that um so yeah so a peak is one thing that's going great right now one thing that's been super positive and another in the pit is something that we're being challenged with within our life right now right so for me i'll go first um i started a new morning routine so Mm -hmm. Uh, we went to a conference out in Vegas a couple weeks ago and uh, just kind of rejuvenized and it was about business marketing and real estate and um, just basically regrouped. Um, so I, I, I'm starting a brand new morning routine and it's been great. I've been trying to get to the gym by 5.15, um, come home, do a cold plunge or ice bath, whatever you want to call it. And then I'll try to read or listen to a podcast or something and then kind of get ready for work. So that's been really good. It's been helping my days be more like, I guess, strategic and a little bit more planned out, which has been good. A pit is insurance companies right now. They are uh, shutting, like they they can't they can't legally shut new business down, but they can make it so hard where you know you have to get literally four or five pages of you know a bunch of different things to even get a quote back. So that's how them that's that's how they basically go about saying hey we don't want any new business um, because of rates and everything that's going on in the market right now. So. That's been something that we've been having to pivot with worn amounts, but uh, that, that, that's life, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. what do well, you got? Uh, for me, uh, I'd say a peak for me is we've been um, we've been working on some software for for quite some time, yeah. and uh, man, we're really really progressing uh, really well, uh, especially here recently. And that in connection with the, the technology that's happening and the advancement of technology in our industry has really kind of opened up some doors uh, and really is going to speed up uh, okay. the way in which we can do business, how we do business, and and uh, dramatically going to improve. So I've just been excited. I've um, been on more they, with developers. They call them scrum calls. Which is really yeah. kind of like just a check-in. Mm-hmm. Kind of feels like a quarterback call and a play for a really long time. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, really excited about that, and, and that's been uh, moving moving really well, okay. and been a long long process for us that we're getting real close to the end. So cool. that's a peak for me. Um, I'd say a pit for me is uh, I think just our business, just like the consumers, uh, man, a crunch uh, cash. Not necessarily yeah. a cash crunch, but man, the consumers are just getting hammered on inflation and the taxes going up and just everybody's overall budgets you know i so I'd, I'd say that's probably the pit for yep. me is is seeing what the consumers are going through yep. and having to navigate that i think i could piggyback off that like it's crazy like yeah. you know like whenever people's when we're seeing some renewals come through, it's like, man, like this is, and it's like nothing has happened. Like, you know, if someone has a bad credit, like, gosh, it is going up. Like, 
and then they yeah. like man we're gonna, like we're like we'll shop you around we'll go back to the market you know because we don't usually do that every year um mm-hmm. like ideally three to five right mm-hmm. that's a good that's a good healthy but right now it's like gosh like this is not reasonable like this is like i can't like we can't not like do something yeah. here and uh then we go back to remarket it and it's like goodness this is literally <laughs> the best you have and like they're like well i'm gonna shop and they're like yeah jake like or whoever they're talking like yeah this is we're yeah. gonna have to stay there and it's like because i'll tell people like you know like hey like this is kind of unreasonable like i think you should probably try to look go elsewhere and it's just nuts <laughs> yeah i you know that's one of those things that uh with my past life and, and mortgage banking and, and seeing what and it's going to be tough on a lot of people. Yeah. Like with, with the tax, I mean, not only insurance going yep. up, just like everything goes up, but you know, with our taxes kind of skyrocketing, mm-hmm. right? And you see a 20, 30, 40% increase on taxes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like anybody that owns a home, uh, you know, the, I think the percentage I saw a long time ago is like 87% of mortgages are escrowed, mm-hmm. which means okay. it's included mm-hmm. in yeah. their monthly payment. And your insurance is included mm-hmm. in that, their taxes. Mm-hmm. Well, it's retro retro lee if that's a word yep. calculated well if you're in if your taxes go up yeah. let's say 800 bucks that means you got to collect an extra 1600 bucks the next 12 months because mm-hmm. you got to collect what's going to be due and then you got to catch up and so you're going to see people even these people that have these amazing 2.99 mm-hmm. three and a quarter 30 year fixed rates you're going to see their payments go up three four hundred bucks mm-hmm. solely because of their taxes now it'll balance back down a little bit a year from now but for sure man a consumer that's already been beat up on the cost of everything going yep. up you like know, if you bought a house a year ago or whenever rates jumped and then you know you have a because i have we were talking like me and michaela we have a 2.1 percent rate on our home right now and yeah. it's like you know you think of that like that's impossible you know yeah. and at that time we were like i wonder if we can get it down into the ones it's like goodness dude we're like we're freaking to sell i mean and now it's like god if we can get it six i mean what are rates right now six uh, or seven or oh, yeah. in the upper sixes a, yeah upper like, sixes didn't they just take an increase yeah yes yeah I mean, well i always gotta have people i always kind of find out people like i wear rates and I, my mm-hmm. um sense of everything is what's real estate rates yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. and then you talk yeah. about prime but yeah i believe the fed just raised again yesterday yeah. to an all-time wow. that's uh, an all-time high like thing. in like ever not, not all time no i think like past 25 years or something maybe? yeah i think something, it gets 22 a, or something yeah because i think when it was super high in the 80s yeah that's but, wild uh, yeah hmm. okay bo thomas um so me and bo we've quit an introduction for you so we've known each other like i said what eight months is it Coming yeah. up on a year, maybe? Yeah, I'm getting close. Coming up on so. a year, okay. Yeah. Um, met through insurance, real mm-hmm. estate. Um, he, you know, Bo invested into some real estate. Uh, he also owns a couple of businesses here locally in Kansas City area. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, Bo, I'll let you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, introduce yourself. Man, I am uh, getting ready to celebrate my 25th anniversary, first part of next That's month. That's awesome, man. So uh, excited about that. Have two boys, uh, 17 and 15. Okay. Uh, so I got um, sophomore and freshman. Uh, live here in Lee Summit. Been um, been up here going on. Oh gosh, uh, 15 years now. So. Because you're from Butler. Yep. No, uh, small town. Um, God's country down there in Freeman, Missouri. Freeman. That's Cass what it was. County. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. So. And whenever we talk, that when we first, because like I'm from Pleasant Hill. Yeah. Like, man, I got. Like I got people that live out, like a lot of family lives out like the Marshall area. Mm -hmm. And it's just all like, you think Freeman, like, you know, it's like on steroids with that. But anyways, um, I felt like, cause I didn't know, I I never, we never seen each other. I never, I Mm -hmm. I knew I've always seen Credit Law Center, Mm -hmm. um, but I just, it just, we just never seen each other. So anyway, so that's awesome. So a local guy um, Mm -hmm. here in Lee Summit, 20 or 15 years now. So. Um, yeah, so um, family guy. We have two two businesses, uh, Credit Law Center and Credit Armor, okay. uh, that are kind of cohesive together. Uh, we built one because of the other mm-hmm. uh, for the for our clients. Uh, been doing that since 2011. Uh, before that, mm-hmm. I always call myself a recovering mortgage banker. Okay. Uh, I did that for about 10 years. Loved that industry, but led me to where I am today. Yeah. In that and. So when did you get into the mortgage business? Uh, I got in the mortgage business in 2002. Okay. Yeah. So you went through the, all the 2008 stuff and all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, when it was uh, 
kind of like a dinosaur when you when you talk about the mortgage industry when when I first started doing mortgages um, FHA had no credit score requirement so wow. it was it sounds insane compared to where we are now but you really looked at someone's job uh, assets hmm. their down payment you know then you looked at credit history gotcha as opposed to you know now now it's like a requirement yeah. to be this for you it to be scores a pass fail yeah uh -huh. uh, first question what's your yep. credit score and then do i even need to go to these other questions which wow which that's what led us to credit law center gotcha okay so credit law center so um honestly like when you first told me about that i, I wasn't even really familiar with it like mm -hmm. I, I honestly thought it was a when i I'll, i don't even know if i've ever told you this when i first talked to you i thought you were a lawyer or mm -hmm. i thought you're an attorney like just with mm -hmm. your with your email thread so Tell us about that um, and what that business entails. Yeah, um, what we do is we help consumers improve their buying power okay. by increasing their credit score and, and improving their overall credit profile. Okay. So if you've got a negative item on there or a lot of it is teaching as well, sometimes it's not just about removing a negative item on a credit report, it's about educating on the things you can do to improve your overall credit okay. score based on how you use the credit cards that you have or how to establish trade lines. So there's a lot of education in that. Um, and what separates us from other people that do credit, pair, credit repair mm -hmm. is that we use the law. And so uh, the FTC did a report a few years back and it was a big report and got, got a lot of news, but over 79% of credit reports contain errors. Um, and hmm. what we do is we help find those errors use that as leverage and that leverage is created when we catch them making a mistake it's typically a violation of the law and we're going to point out that this is a violation of the law and we can either ask you to remove the information and move on mm -hmm. or one of our attorneys is going to pursue it gotcha and that, is there any like any certain mistakes that is like that is more common than others yeah i'd say some one of the most common mistakes we see are um our highest is in collections themselves okay and because the barrier of entry to become a debt collector is so low, uh, it invites a lot of non-compliance. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, I'm following you. And uh, so they, they figure out the more damage they can do to your credit report, the more likely they are to be paid, right? So doing it the wrong way can, can wow. be more profitable for them. So that's where I see the most mistakes are in credit reports. Hmm. And then um, you're gonna, your, your subprime lenders kind of follow in that same vein, mm -hmm. you know, that they're gonna do things that are gonna keep that a subprime person because mm -hmm. they make more money that mm -hmm. way. Uh, and then you just have overall mistakes just based on For volume, sure. yep. right? Gotcha. And, and the bureaus are kind of like a whole nother side of that, which is where we find a lot of mistakes as well. Okay. Because the credit reporting agencies themselves, um, you know, a lot of times consumers think, well, yeah, they're just kind of doing their job. Mm -hmm. But really, once you understand what their job is, it's a lot easier to identify the mistakes. And so with credit reporting agencies, um, two things, their job or what they do is sell data. Okay. Not accurate data, not good data, not just bad data. data, just data. So the more data they can get, the more the money volume, yeah. they're going to make, right? Okay. And then when you start to try to apply logic to what makes your credit score go up and down, mm -hmm. a lot of times that logic is missed because they don't understand the purpose of the credit score. Okay. And your, your credit score is not trying to, you know, your your credit score doesn't determine whether you get approved or denied for a loan or a job or what rate you pay mm -hmm. in insurance. Uh, your credit score's job is to try to predict the likelihood of you going 90 days late in the next 24 months. Makes sense. And so when you understand that and then look at the things you do in, in regards to how you pay your bill or what your credit mm -hmm. card balances are, or what activity you have, it's trying to predict that. Right, the next ninety okay. day late. I'm following. Yeah. So, so educating consumers on that's a big part of what Credit Law Center does, and because that's their, I mean that that's that's their variable, right? Like when a bank is loaning out, mm -hmm. like you know, loaning money to you, they're the variable that they're trying to decide is if you are going to pay that loan back or not, mm -hmm. right? For I mean, sure. Is that like there's like it's yeah. like life insurance? Like the only variable a life insurance company has is when you are going to die. Mm -hmm. Right, like the mm -hmm. mortality rate or the mortality, you know, the, the score rate, whatever you want to, whatever they want to call it, but that's what they're trying to basically figure out is if you're going to pay this loan back, 
I mean, and how they can calculate yeah, that risk. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so if you try to simplify that a little bit, you know, the higher the credit score mm -hmm. is going to be, the less likely Correct. you are to default, the lower the credit score, the more likely. That makes sense. Okay. Right. Yep. So, um, yeah. That's not bad if you only have one variable yeah. <laughs> to figure out. I mean, if you think of it like from Silly. a banking standpoint, yeah. like there's also many types of variables that I know that we deal with on a daily basis. And I yeah. know you do it too, that it's just mm -hmm. like, man, if you could just have one variable. So, okay. Um, so what would be, so that's cool. So, okay. So that, that, that's what credit law centers. Are. So when we did, when did you guys start that? So you said you started, you got out of the mortgage business in like 2010 mm -hmm. ish, 2011, 2011. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kind of a kind of a neat story um, is is before I was kind of talking about when I was uh, uh, in mortgage banking, mm -hmm. FHA loans didn't have a credit score requirement. So when I was in in that industry and 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 doing that every day, um, each year some of the common sense just kept getting removed from the mortgage process okay. as things started to get automated, which then led to the subprime mm -hmm. debacle. Uh, but each year I saw a loan that would have been done last year not able to get done this year and then the next year and the next year. Not all of those loans were bad. Mm -hmm. um, so um, how Credit Law Center came to be uh, was uh, I had a friend of mine that was just getting ready to get married, uh, kind of your typical story, mm -hmm. uh, was engaged, getting ready to buy a house. Uh, I'd known him since grade school and um, his fiance. so we're probably three quarters away through the mortgage process and his fiance calls me and she's super upset, kind of freaked out. Uh, she got a call by a debt collector, um, left her a voicemail. And it was, uh, I will never forget this, but it's Travis Caldwell, supposed name. Mm -hmm. I think that was their, their um, stage name that they used. Okay. Uh, Travis Caldwell with P&B Capital uh, called and left her a message and she was alarmed by it. But then her father in South Carolina uh, had got the same exact voicemail, and then another relative in Texas had got the same voicemail. Hmm. So she had called them back, and there is a, this debt, old credit card, um, may or may not have even been hers, but mm -hmm. he starts to tell her that we're going to levage or levy bank accounts and we're going to attach liens to property, and she's super freaked scared, out, yeah. freaked out. And uh, I'm just in mortgage banking at the time, I, mm -hmm. I don't know much except that just doesn't sound right Correct. to me. Um, so called, uh, called a friend of mine that was an attorney and I said, Hey, I got this, you know, do you want to sue a debt collector? Great guy. Tom Adelman, uh, said, yeah, uh, yeah, man, this guy is violating the FDCPA about nine different ways. And this, this, this would be <laughs> happening. So, okay. uh, he took the voicemail and, um, um, contacted him. We did a, uh, kind of settlement demand cease and desist type situation. Uh, they removed the information from the credit report, literally apologized, and mailed the client and the attorney a check for about, uh, I think it was like $3,500. And uh, put, put uh, my friend's fiance obviously at ease mm -hmm. and, and, and went through a smooth mortgage process. And I was like, I think we might have something here, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so Tom and I had been friends and okay. I said, uh, I, think we, I think we got maybe, I think we probably have a business here. Yeah. And, um, so that's that's how, how it came about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And and that actually leads into um, I was going to ask about partners, you know, and 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 how you because I know I mean and we'll get into the real estate conversation in just a second, but you have a couple of partners, mm -hmm. right? So like I guess anybody who's listening to this, like, because I mean, how many partners do you have with the Credit Law Center? Is it just you and him? Mm -hmm. Just okay. me and him. So mm -hmm. like, what is some good practices on um, you know having a successful partnership? You know, because everybody's going to have their different niches and know their different roles. And I'm sure your responsibilities are different than his responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think partnerships are great. Mm -hmm. um, I've, um, I've, kind of, I've had partners for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't change it. That's, I mean, at least from when I've grown up, mm -hmm. right? I grew up in a blue collar area. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, partners are bad. Like, yeah. you know, that was like, if you need a partner, like you're, it's because you can't handle it on your own. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, that's not bad. Like, if, if you can admit that you can't handle it on your own, you need somebody else. Like, that's good, right? Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of entrepreneurial-minded people probably pull back from that. Um, and you know, obviously, the first like, well, you're gonna split everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it actually, you know, you you when you really start to look at the advantages, if you get a good partner mm -hmm. and choose a good partner, um, you you know. Uh, 
you're, you're able to take vacations. And one of the toughest parts about being a uh, self-employed or an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is that you never get a clock out and go home. Yep. You know, just, you can't ever turn it off. Uh, partnerships help dramatically with that, you know? So find a partner um, that, you know, is gonna maybe go fast when you're going slow or, or vice you know, versa, even yeah. go like slow us down, like yeah. almost level you out, like the exact opposite mm -hmm. of maybe, okay. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, uh, I, I know me, like uh, when you get into real estate, you know, like uh, I'm ultra aggressive, uh, really impatient mm -hmm. and want to move like lightning fast. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that can cost you a lot of money sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, in, in regards to the real estate, that we're a good balance, yep. we're a good balance there. And the same thing in business, mm -hmm. you know, uh, having somebody a second set of eyes to sometimes speed you up, sometimes slow you down, mm -hmm. you know, makes a, makes a big difference yep. and keeps you from an absolute burnout, which, which can happen. Uh, that's a good point. I've, I've had that, you know, a few times yep. in, throughout my, well, you gotta have fun. I mean, you gotta have, I mean, you gotta enjoy what you do. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's if why you're, you're doing it. Exactly. Like if you're, even though, yes, like you said, you can't turn that stuff off. Um, it's, it, I don't know. Like I feel like it's, it, that's, that's the great part. And we've talked about a little bit about this with like delegation and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's like if, if you're trying to do everything, that's where the burnout comes. And then you're just basically, a. I mean, over. I mean, you're just a W two employee, you know, yeah. of your business, and it's like the reason why you got out of d mm -hmm. maybe going to work for somebody else was for some extra freedom, some extra X, Y, and Z, and you're not getting that. So, oh sure, and I, I always like the phrase: uh, if you're doing everything, you're probably not really good at anything. Yep, a <laughs> jack of all trades is a uh, master of none. Master yeah. of none. Yep, exactly, <laughs> sure. exactly. Yeah. And I actually, it's so funny you say that. Um, I, I, lo I watched somebody, we were just talking about podcast earlier. Mm -hmm. I watched somebody literally yesterday morning and they were interviewing this lady and uh, she, su super successful like businesswoman. She, I think had two different businesses, nine figures, like just a very big, mm -hmm. big company. And this lady, she goes, she asked, she goes, um, you know, this is like a very common question. Like if you were 20 years old, you know, what would be like what would be one thing you would tell a 20 year old person? Like, and she was like, honestly, it's very simple. Figure out one, don't figure out, don't try to think about money. Don't think about anything else. Try to figure out what you're good at, right? And be an expert at that. Yeah. Literally, like if you're gonna, if you're gonna do this, go in and be, literally be number one. Because when you're number one in everything, money follows, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not like, I mean, anything at number one, like the number one guy, the number one girl, it's like they always have every, you know, mm -hmm. they have all the, all the things that you think you want. Yeah. So I thought that was a pretty good. And I, uh, to it kind of in that same vein there, I, I always think I always advice I've given is by being as fortunate as I have been, you know, with success and a mm -hmm. few things um, in, in different areas. But, you know, when somebody's asked me, I always like, I always talk about like you, not in any, there's three ingredients that you're gonna have to have in order for it to be, mm -hmm. you know, super successful long-term. Um, find something that is helping someone yep. somehow, what, whether that be with their credit report, mm -hmm. with what they're paying for insurance mm -hmm. or legal troubles or, you know, whatever Being that is. a service for somebody. Yeah, something that is doing good, mm -hmm. right? That, which is super important. Um, secondly, you got to enjoy it. I mean, you don't necessarily have to love it, mm -hmm. but you can't dislike it. Correct. <laughs> right? Correct. And the third thing is, does it make a dollar? Mm -hmm. And if you have all three of those things, you're, you're going to be successful. Yep. But if one of those things are missing, it doesn't matter. Yep. It could be you don't care for it really in the big scheme mm -hmm. of things. Uh, and the other two are there. Yep. Well, it's not going to last long term. You know, you could love it and it really, really helps people. But if there's no monetary there, it's not gonna not gonna last. Correct. Right? So you gotta have those three variables in order to be. Yeah. Super no, and I agree. Them. I think that's a great point. <laughs> um, I, I do have a quick question on that because mm -hmm. I know you guys. How many employees you guys have at Credit Law Center? Uh, forty-eight. Okay. So, how do you how do you do that? How do mm -hmm. you like how do you manage all of those people? Right, mm -hmm. and 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 I don't and manages might not even be the right word because I'm sure you're maybe not probably not managing them, um, but how do you basically? 
I guess, deal with that, do that, and then also do all the other stuff. Um, because I know we're also going to talk about like the identity protection. Is mm -hmm. that yeah, credit armor? Know, the credit armor. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like, how do you basically, because there's only 24 hours in a day, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody has the same amount of time. So what are a couple cool, like good things that you do that's like a must every single day to make sure that you're basically checking all your boxes mm -hmm. on a daily basis? I mean, I, um, I throw out there, I'm, I'm not a huge reader. Um, I, I, that's one of the things I could wish I could make myself do mm -hmm. a better job of, but, uh, uh, rocket fuel. So, uh, great. But what I got out of that a, a few years back was scorecards. So when you start to try to scale something, um, you've got to be able to figure out what is needed really quickly and then to be able to execute on that need. Mm -hmm. And scorecards are a, a great way to do that. And that's what I got out of that book. Uh, so each one of our departments, I've got a client care team, we've got a the paralegal team, then we have our credit advisor team, and then there's legal. Okay. Well, you want to figure out a way to measure whatever you can and then put a numeric value to that and then try to automate it, right? So people are tracking what they are or aren't doing mm -hmm. uh, each day and a value comes to that. So you can quickly glance and see, uh, you know, say a great number for this department is five. Okay. And if it's a three, awesome you know you, you need to dig in and figure out there's some help there if it's at a five you don't need as much time there so scorecards uh, are a great way to hmm. do that and uh, rocket fuel I think is amazing but mm -hmm. at the end of the day you gotta have great people great companies have great people and Correct. I'm only going to go as far as our people take us yep and uh, with that um, you need to find positive people uh, that can be leaders some mm -hmm. people are uh, just amazing at, at at their job and do fantastic but don't want or feel comfortable leading a team correct um so the you know putting putting people in the right place to thrive and um one other nugget i would throw in there is and this was kind of, i feel like a game changer for us that was really kind of like an aha moment mm -hmm. whenever you have a business you know it's typically led by the sales side okay. right yep sales sales people are you know the leader you mm -hmm. know they create all the work for operations mm -hmm. but sales doesn't have a job if it wasn't for operations mm -hmm. and you can really apply that logic to just about any business <clears throat> and in doing that I, I looked back and I was like man why why is sales always a leader not necessarily because it's the first part of the process the business, of the, or, yeah. you know but really, I think one of the things is like salespeople um, know what they need to do in order to make more money. Mm -hmm. So salespeople come in and, and they know what to do each and every day to make more money and it's more sales or, and then how to get better at sales, how to become more of an expert in your field and all of those things. But fundamentally, a lot of times in operations, the operation person doesn't necessarily know that. Yep. And in the normal corporate culture and structure somebody comes in and they they get hired on at an hourly rate and they're like okay great the longer i'm here and the more i show up on time i'm going to get my three to five percent a year annual annual review mm -hmm. and to me that's super slow mm -hmm. right so one thing i did a few years back is i went into each of our operations people when i went back and and started working the operations side of the business <clears throat> and just mapped it out um, each one of our roles in our company have a have four levels to them you know okay. and so a one two three and a four and somebody comes in at a one and here's what's expected of this role as a one and when you get to where you can do this from two to here, from here to there, mm -hmm. it's going to be a two, and then from okay. there to there, it's a four. And here's the pay as that. Okay. And you can go through this process as fast as you possibly can or you want. Mm -hmm. right? It's up to you. Here's the gas, here's the break, right? And then as a manager, the only thing I can screw up is if I move you too fast or if I move you too slow. Mm -hmm. If I move you too fast, the other people that are at that higher position are frustrated because they're getting Already. compensated that way and, yep. and you're not you're not doing your job. If I move you too slow, you're frustrated. Mm -hmm. So um, 
in doing that and not doing the annual reviews and the um, slow yeah. methodical part of that and I think that really empowered a lot of our operations people so the people it gives almost really like an urgency um, to you know to, to basically like what you said the, the gas yeah. and the brake you mm -hmm. know if you want to go super fast let's roll yeah. right if you want to go slow and take it easy like that's fine too there's yeah. there's a role because everybody is different from what I've seen and that's hard sometimes because I mean, at least for me, like sometimes like if I'm like this way, like go, go, go. And it's like, man, if someone's not like rolling that way, it's like, oh, come on, like, let's, yeah. you know, and, and it, that's not how everybody's driven. And yeah. I think that's a, that's, that's what's so really impressive. Like when I'm talking to people that I feel like that have, you know, over 10 employees realistically, like mm -hmm. everything you just said, like the reason I feel like why it is also scaled to that spot is because of, you know, you guys, right? Mm -hmm. on, on your guys' processes and systems and your guys' character mm -hmm. and how you guys do things and treat people. Like, that's a, I think that's a, a big kudos to you guys, mm -hmm. you know, on that, of course. So anyways, but. Yeah, that was one of the things that surprised me the most about that was that that really, you're able to identify those people yeah. right away. The people that really kind of want to lead or there's, and the, or there's people that are, you know what, I, I like where I'm at right mm -hmm. now. Yep, I, exactly. I, I enjoy They're what fun. I'm doing. There's yep. not a lot of stress. And I like, you know, and yep. that's okay. You can stay there. But that person in, in a normal corporate structure, or the traditional environment, um, you know, is three, four, five, six, seven, eight years later, mm -hmm. you know, expected to be the person that's continually advanced mm -hmm. and then they're compensated that way yep. and then that unfortunately leads to an employer that has to make a business decision when times get tough they're like mm, i know he's been here eight years or yep. she's been here five years she has seniority but the exactly production, production is the production exactly. and, and we got to go backwards and then that person's left with I, what did i do wrong correct you know and they have no idea that's good that's a good hmm. yeah. okay okay so Let's get into some real estate. Um, what do we What are we at there? I can't see that far. We're we're forty five minutes, thirty minutes into it. So, let's talk on some real estate. So, um, I guess tell us what you guys are doing in the real estate game. I know you guys are doing a lot. Um, I've always wanted to ask you this: um, How many units are you guys up to right now? Our doors. Oh goodness, uh, tough. I I have. Um, um, we have a couple of different LLCs okay. that own uh, different yep. properties. So we've got an apartment complex and uh, that that's 40 units. And then we've got a couple of clusters of duplexes. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's, to be honest, I don't even know it's the okay. exact number. Because then we have our office building that um, mm -hmm. CLC and Credit Armor's in. I think that kind of probably counts yep. as like six units. Uh, but that number's around eighty. I was gonna say I, I have yeah. a, I I already added it up. Like, oh. <laughs> I, I did an estimate, and it was of it was it was probably close. I mean, yeah, I was I mean I didn't get the exact number, but I'm mm -hmm. you're pushing hundred units, and yeah. from the ones that I know about, of course, mm -hmm. at least. So, um, and that's a really you know I mean you know like that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like that's a, that's a really cool thing. Um, I, I I know guys that uh, you know they. You know, and we, you know, me and Michaela, like we love, you know, doing the real estate stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, now it's like we've talked about before. It's like we just need to get in there and start doing it because I feel like what happens is people will buy some real estate and then they're like, okay, now I'm I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Like you know, so and I've seen it where you know guys have you know you know and they'll have 20, 30 units, and that's mm -hmm. that's that's a like I see a lot. We see a lot of that, mm -hmm. and to go from that to the next level, I feel like it's just a different ball game there. So, and you guys have done this in a pretty short amount of time right how many years has it taken you guys to get to that um, i would say i, mean, I know you've probably been in real estate for a while but where it started actually taking off when you guys are being very aggressive with it yeah i, I would say uh 2018 is when we started getting serious and and really you know for for real estate i always the advice i give is <clears throat> very very similar to where I go back to those three things. Mm -hmm. You know, that you've got to have those three variables. Oh, yeah. It's missing one, it doesn't work. Yep. And with real estate, you know, stepping into that and and doing it, I think it's an amazing way. I, I don't know of a better way to mm -hmm. build what would be considered long-term wealth. Mm -hmm. um, and 
the sooner you can get started, the better, just like with anything. You know, you start talking about investing in your 401k and the difference of doing that at 20 mm-hmm. and starting at 20 and, and 30 and millions, you know, or million, uh, you know, on that. But getting in that, figuring out, you know, systems mm-hmm. and figure out things you're good at, mm-hmm. uh, figure out the things you're not good at mm-hmm. and find people um, that fill those offset voids. those, fill yep. those woods, yeah. And, you know, a lot of times people like, I go back and I remember uh, – before before I got in the mortgage business, I had a landscaping company and irrigation and tree tree work. And I remember uh, finally had developed a good relationship with a bank, and I wanted to buy wanted to start buying rentals way back then. Yeah. And um, I really want to go back and shake my finger at that that, that person, or and uh, just say, oh, you shouldn't have said that, right? you know, because she's like, oh, you don't want to be a landlord. And my oh, yeah. point of that is, some people don't want to be landlords. Right. Well, and if you don't, then that's okay. There's management companies that'll do that for mm-hmm. you, and there's a fee for that. Mm-hmm. And if you're not good at that, then don't do that. Correct. If you're not good at repairs, don't do that. But you've got to find, you know, good people to fill those voids yep. and to do that. And and so we we started it with that in mind. Um, and it was started to do real estate solely on a retirement type investment account, like instead of plugging into the 401k. No, I, I just think uh, w- when you really evaluate real estate from an investing standpoint, you know, one, um, you know, the barrier entry is a little tougher than it obviously is to just mm-hmm. invest in the stock market. But we, you start to look at the tax advantages of it in the long term. You know, I always look at it of just like trying to be simpleton, right? You know, like. I don't know anybody that got really wealthy saving money. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And then all you look at a lot of people that are retired right now that where inflation is scary as hell, know. you know, and with that real estate's protected, mm-hmm. you know, like if you invest, 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 invest in your 401k and you get to 65 and you've got, you know, you, you just hope that you don't run out of money before you, you die. Know, die. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's scary, yep. but, uh, you know, like that's what I love about real estate is that real estate you invest, like don't sell it, right? You you keep collecting, service the mm-hmm. debt, and later on it doesn't matter. You've got something you can hand down or 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 pass on mm-hmm. uh, to that, and you don't worry about you know well, what if I live to what if I'm fortunate enough mm-hmm. to live to a hundred, you yep. know? And uh, so I just think it's a better way. Um, <clears throat> I think the government's telling you they think it's a better way because it's better for the economy as well mm-hmm. because they're giving you tax advantages to mm-hmm. do that. And um, just made just made just made a lot of sense. Yep. Just yep. made a lot of sense. So, and I, I look at it like um, it's a snowball. Um, you know, you you're at the top of the hill, and you if you make a good solid snowball and mm-hmm. roll it a little bit, eventually it starts to be able to bigger just and bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger, and take off. And the sooner you can start that snowball, the better. Yep. Yeah, and that's a great point because um, I mean, you get there's so many advantages with depreciation. The I mean, the tax advantages, the cash flow, the you know, I mean, again, like what you're talking about, like people, that's their, like, that's a lot. I don't be a landlord. I don't want to deal with that. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, hire oh, somebody to do it. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, exactly. no, like you yeah. can still do that. So, um, so that's cool. So I guess I guess I got a question for you. So leveraging leveraging basically properties and debt and stuff mm-hmm. like that like are, do you guys do a lot of that i'm assuming yeah with, with my background in mortgage banking that was one thing that i i, I think i helped bring to the table with the, the partners that we have um that makes just makes good sense mm-hmm. right um <clears throat> you uh love the book rich dad poor dad mm-hmm. um Richard Kasaki that uh, that states like the good debt, bad debt, mm-hmm. and not to look at your house as an asset mm-hmm. because it only look at assets that create cash, mm-hmm. and the house that you live in does not mm-hmm. create cash. And you see or, or follow or listen to a lot of people who have been just uber successful in this industry or that industry. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> they they look at that the same, right? Yep. And so um, leverage is super important. Uh, when you go back in and look at all of the people that have had bad experiences or a crash and burn, the subprime crisis to it, 2008, um, you know, in the housing bubble, it was because people were over leveraged. Correct. Right. So leverage is not a bad thing. Uh, over leveraged is. So we have a, a threshold that we will never surpass. Okay. Right. We just even though a bank says you. Can do you it. can do up to 80% or <laughs> yeah. it, what, do, you, do you mind Doesn't, sharing that number? Yeah. 
Uh, I, I really look at it like 75 okay. is, is probably kind of that, that benchmark. Uh, but I would I look at it differently per property. Okay. Right? So I think kind of evaluating, you know, like a best day. Best and worst time. Best, best like, worst what day. This, yeah. I think, you've, I think mm-hmm. I've, I've heard that before. Where yeah. I think, and it was actually you, you said, look at what is the best um, the best situation with this property ever, and then what is the absolute worst? Mm-hmm. Is that what yeah, you mean? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then kind of prepare for both. Yep. And and that way, that's and that's have, a, try to meet a, meet yeah. a middle there. Super important. That way, if if something does go dramatically or you know goes bad, mm-hmm. uh, where where are you at? And yep. can you can you withhold that? Then the people that get over leveraged are the ones that lose things. And you know, uh, yeah, that makes sense. And and it, and it kind of removes the stress. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's you know a lot of people kind of get into that spot because the banks get aggressive and they they'll do it you mm-hmm. know and there's a lot of people that bought real estate in the last you know three years that was razor thin from a cash flow standpoint at a rate that mm-hmm. is a half the rate that banks are pushing right now mm-hmm. and when that when that loan comes for renewal. The deal doesn't make sense anymore. Oh, because it's like an arm, like mm-hmm. if they're on an arm, or is that, I mean, yeah. is that what they're called? Like an arm? Yeah, or like so a, yeah an arm or a balloon. Okay. So you have like a, a three or a five year, yep. um, and then it's going to adjust. And mm-hmm. when it does, you know, if you're <laughs> good. And then you have all the taxes that have gone up, insurance and everything <laughs> else. And yeah. So that's actually a thing. So that, that leads sure. into this question. Um, Two on that. So, what do you? Uh, I mean, what what do you? What's your what's your opinion of the future with this whole real estate market? Um, for exactly what you just said, with mm-hmm. the arms and with all these other you know things that are going to be changing in the next X amount of five, seven, six, mm-hmm. five, five to eight years. But then, you also have um, DCSR loans. Is that what they call DSCR uh, yeah. loans? We we don't do any of those, but yeah, those, but, those are out there. Yeah, but which are based on if it cash flows. I was gonna, but is it that also like basically no doc loans? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I know it's not the same as what it was because I mean, I wasn't even old enough to be in that game at that eight, at that time. But mm-hmm. in 08, right? They were doing mm-hmm. no like that's what got people into trouble. Do you think like is it, are we? In that same, do you get what I'm saying here? Like, yeah, are you no. get, are, is that Are we getting into some dangerous air territory with that stuff? Um, we're definitely not in that territory that okay. we were in 2008 to that extent. Okay. Uh, I think people are uh, willing to maybe kind of go through that door, but not kick it down okay. like they did in 2008. Uh, but there, there are loans out there uh, that will base it solely off the property, Correct. not necessarily yep. the borrower. And the tough part about that is, is it, when you do those types of loans, mm-hmm. it really removes any margin of error. You know, one thing goes bad. That's what I'm. S- that those guys. So I think there's yeah, there are a lot of those loans out there. Mm-hmm. So I think some of those uh, are going to create opportunities for other people. Uh, I think there's a lot of that that's going to happen. Um, I think you know the other thing that is fundamentally changed in the real estate. Um, in my era, if Mm -hmm. you will, um, is, man, you know, there's a lot of people that grew up through the housing crisis, 08, you know, Mm -hmm. that were either in high school or or grade school or middle middle Mm -hmm. school or, you know, and that impacted them. And it impacted the people that went through that. So they look at real estate differently. They're like, they're almost spooked a little bit of it. Yeah. Mean? Yeah, oh, for sure. You know, and and the message out there, too, from the next generation is looking at, you know, I, I've heard a phrase a couple of times that, you know, like, I, I don't really want to be attached to a 30 year mortgage. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when you go to somebody my age, you know, in their mid 40s, um, we, we grow up and politicians, you know, are running on mm-hmm. the American dream, which is to, you know, go to school, get a good job, and buy a house. And that was the American dream. And now the American dream is like, I don't don't have to have a house to fulfill Mm -hmm. that, you know? And so you see institutions and hedge funds coming in and buying single family homes, gobbling them all up. And what I believe is going to happen is it's going to create a wider gap in the wealth gap. You know, if, if people slow down buying houses and there's less actual homeowners than there were, it's the number one creator of wealth mm-hmm. since ever. Yep, uh, is is real estate, and a lot of times people have used their house to, um, you know, consolidate debt. Mm-hmm. You know, well, if you never own a house, that's never an option. And 
your housing expense is going to run with inflation and mm -hmm. it's going to just continue to get higher and higher and higher and the mm -hmm. older that you get so the sooner you get in that game the 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 better are you on the other side of that right yeah and so you know that that's my my fear for for a lot of people is that they're like you know i don't want to be a homeowner mm -hmm. you know and the same thing of you know you don't want to be a homeowner at you know 20 or 25 or mm -hmm. 30 but then at 40 and 50 you know you kind of do well mm -hmm. if you don't start saving for retirement till you're 40 or 50 it's definitely a difference mm -hmm. it kind of makes it harder for guys like yourself to to scale at a large but that's where you have to continue to scale because if you're only buying 20 or you know if you have that much mm -hmm. like you have to continue to go mm -hmm. there's a, there's another element that i think is pretty interesting there that i don't think people a lot of people are thinking about too is is you, you spoke before about the 2.1 or 2.125 mm -hmm. percent there's a lot of people that like no thanks i'm, I'm not moving because if i move i gotta sell mm -hmm. and i gotta go get a go get it yeah i gotta go get a rate at 6.75 mm -hmm. or maybe even seven percent <clears throat> and you're your money doesn't obviously go as far. Mm -hmm. So they're like, ah, you know what, I'm gonna stay. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, finish the basement or do an addition or just, just a remodel. That's why you're seeing pools. Yeah, and so you don't see you don't see a listing. So there's not as many listings because people aren't moving and moving and, and upgrading or, you know, the next home, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. So I think you're gonna see people staying in houses longer. Um, and I think you're gonna see less people buying houses mm -hmm. and <clears throat> how that impacts the 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 market itself uh i think it's going to be very interesting and like gonna you know, create some opportunities probably take mm -hmm. some opportunities away and i always always say that too when i talk about real estate too like everybody watches the national news mm -hmm. which could mean the polar opposite where you live because mm -hmm. when they talk about real oh, estate yeah, nationally exactly. and you know and they talk about here in you know Kansas city um, or whatever Kansas city area, totally different mm -hmm. right you know so keep that in mind too yep. and people follow what the major headlines are mm -hmm. and then that is what they think the real estate industry is and it's not it's very and sometimes that's cyclical. what they want you to do they want you to they want you to be scared you know we yeah. want to go on that topic but um yeah because i don't watch the news at all um, Me neither. Don't so even, don't even have, i don't even I'm, i, I only turn live, tvs on on football games yeah, that's it only live tv i have watch is yep. a sport yep exactly um and i think to piggyback off what you just said like uh, i mean that's kind of like I mean, what's currency, right? Currency mm -hmm. is something moving, right? It's mm -hmm. current, right? And if you're not, if, 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 if people are not, like if they're set, if they're settling, or with lack of a better word, settling mm -hmm. at their own house, and they're not wanting to buy another house or upgrade a house, and they're like, okay, let's just fix up this house. Like you said, the market, then there's not as many houses, so then whenever, so I feel like you could almost look at that as two different ways. It's like the market, the prices could go down I mean, mm -hmm. or they could actually go up because the property is less is more valuable now because there isn't. Yeah, like the, the supply it, and demand. Yeah, and and, and that's and where it, I just don't understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I go back and forth on that. That's what you got to look at too. Then you got to look at inventory, like how many houses are being built. You know. Oh and yeah. Okay. So you know, if inventory comes in, mm -hmm. you know, do that. And then you know, the scary thing for builders are. <clears throat> what kind of house do I build? Do I yep. build a, you know, the insane thing of a starter house that's $250,000 yeah. yeah. now, depending on where, you're at. Depending yeah. on where yeah. you're at, or do you build a $500,000 house, mm -hmm. which is more profitable. Yep. So that dictates what gets built. And so I think the next big, big boom is going to be in multifamily. And I think you're kind of already seeing that. Oh yeah, like new new builds yeah. in the multifamily. Yeah, you start yeah, looking makes at sense. apartment complexes that are being built, and because I think that's where builders are forecasting what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be cheaper to live in an apartment than it is in a that's house. Smart. So let's build yeah. a lot of apartments. I, I, think I, that's what I did. Doing. I did hear that it is a uh, what they call a builder's market right now. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and again, that's certain areas, right? Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Yeah. No. That that's good. Um, I like that. So I guess I guess for you, um, have you guys ever thought about building, building an apartment complex, building something like that? You know, we ironically we we just kind of discussed that in our last meeting of of going to a build, you know, mm -hmm. in a build environment and and buying land and and possibly developing. I I think that'd be super fun. I, I know. I, I think, think it could so be too. really really interesting uh, to do. Uh, but haven't ever done it yet. Okay. Because, uh, I mean, you guys are, I mean, I know, like, you guys are basically doing the Burr method, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're basically buying a property, um, you're rehabbing it, you're renting it out, refinancing it, and then doing it again. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. the yep. kind of the strategy? So yep. it's, 
I mean, I know it's not the same at all, but it's still somewhat of the same concept. Like you're, and you know, you're just taking out buying a, a you know, a, a property that needs, you know, renovations. Like yep. you're just starting a brand new. So I, I've always thought that. Like I'm like, you know, because then now you have a property that is brand new, mm -hmm. you know, and like I don't know from a loan and leverage standpoint, like. I don't know. I just always feel like that's a pretty good conversation on on that. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Also, too, the you know you 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 should be the nicest thing on the market. Then that's right? what I mean. So, so you can get top dollar, yeah. and then it's top dollar for like then you set the market right. Like mm -hmm. there's a place right behind our store over here. It's a I love the property. Like I always tell Michaela, it's like I, mm -hmm. I want to build. I want to buy that. You know, it's got set for sale anymore, but uh, it's got a two commer and it, one of the reasons because we we build put like this baby agency mm -hmm. down on the bottom because they have two commercial spaces in the bottom mm -hmm. and then they have like five units up front like like residential mm -hmm. so it's like a mixed property and it's yeah. brand new uh, yeah no, i think no, you no, looked no, at it yeah, yeah. no exactly what you're talking about yeah all right you one. said one time you were like yeah we looked at a property in pleasant hill and i'm like i i, I was like i bet <laughs> yeah. it's that super nice finish too oh yeah nice <clears throat> looks good mm -hmm. you know and it, like and again i think that also goes in like okay it's very nice so like mentally you at least for me like it's like okay i have no problems like there will never be an issue there mm -hmm. versus there's always going to be an issue it's yeah. just which issue yeah. so i don't know so that that's interesting it's it's cool that you guys have talked about that um okay so i guess um market wise like area mm -hmm. um do you guys have a certain area that you that you really like to focus on or that you like like more than others yeah um I, we're we are all over the place. Yes. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. Independence to Belton, Lee Summit, Grandview, Butler, mm -hmm. Freeman. Oh, uh, is it cash flows? Right. Yeah, to I to mean, a certain part. Yeah, yeah to okay. a certain extent for sure. Um, we we just based on kind of how we are and we're built is um, we want to be geographically close enough that it. Gotcha. You know, man, it it's a big headache. Like, you know, if your profit margins, you know, ten percent better but you're 35 miles away is it really that much better you know the, the amount of time you know yeah. and then the headache factor of it so um <clears throat> but we're we're pretty flexible okay um what uh what was i going to ask on that um what uh like do you guys have you guys ever thought about buying properties out of state like is that something you guys have always like ever because i mean i know kansas city market is one of the best markets in mm -hmm. this in the country mm -hmm. i mean what do you i mean i'm assuming yeah, you no, would probably agree with agree. that mm -hmm. um but there's other good markets too oh like for sure you guys ever yeah, thought yeah. about that <clears throat> we haven't ever um we haven't ever really looked out of state with any type of real seriousness mm -hmm. but i think a big part of that is because our markets so good so good yeah <laughs> yeah you know if, if it wasn't uh i i would Fully, fully it's like why, why look at the other like grass is not green on the other side like grass is very like if you like this yeah. market is really green right now yeah like and, or in our area and for us for us one of our uh, one of our biggest advantages is uh, one of our partners um, is extremely good at the the rehab process oh, okay. so that would be different you know a state or two away um, so that's a, a real okay. big competitive advantage for us. We, we try to stay pretty close. So when you guys, so you guys, you have your partners. Um, I don't know if you want to talk on that or not, but what what do, what do your partners look like with that? Like what's everybody's different uh, expertise mm -hmm. um, and what role they have? Well, uh, me and and Tom uh, do most of the managing okay. uh, of the properties and, and, you know, obviously collecting the rents and, and um, We've got a partner that does most, uh, if not all, of the leasing okay. and the showing. And we've got another partner that deals and controls with all of the remodeling and the contracting okay. process of it. So kind of divides it up, which allows it not to become um, a full-time job for mm. any of us, you know, and allows us to kind of do it on the side Yeah, um, because there is four of us. If there wasn't four of us, it would Correct. have a dramatic impact on everybody's full-time job. So. Yep. Uh, that helps quite a bit, but kind of dividing that stuff up, and, mm -hmm. and then also, you know, one thing you, with that you're going to see kind of growing pains. Like we can only grow at a certain rate. You know, mm -hmm. we need to slow down and, and get caught up here, or maybe we need to speed mm -hmm. up over here, and you know, to keep all of the kind of balls in the air. Yeah. Is a, is but a, it's almost like if you uh, get a process down, a pro, you know, a process and system down, where it's like okay. 
uh, you know, we got, we bought these, this, you know, deal, mm -hmm. right? This deal has been purchased. Okay, this is our goal with that. Bam, 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 bam. Now it's done. But I guess the other part other, what you're saying is like, if you're aggressive and you have that deal going on, then there's another deal that comes up and it's like, oh, well, let's get that deal too. Yeah. You know, like that's yeah. how. That's that's one thing, guys, kind of go back to what we talked about <laughs> with partners. Uh, there's four of us mm -hmm. and there's two of us that want to buy everything. All buy, 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 yeah. Um, I've like never seen something like, no, nah, I think that, there, that there's a deal there. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, I think it's good. And you know, like never, never a no. Know. And the other two help slow us down. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, that's uh, when I heard a phrase that uh, sometimes you make the most amount of money on the ones you don't buy. That's the uh, which is I, I thought an interesting thought process of, of looking at it mm -hmm. because it, it's a headache or you don't yeah. have to be aggressive and and that's the other thing that's an advantage to us compared to I think a lot of other people that are trying to do that <clears throat> is we don't have to do a deal to keep anybody busy yeah. or to generate a you know a sale for cash to keep yep. things going if we don't do anything for six months then no big deal yeah right if we do two deals in six months mm -hmm. fantastic awesome right yeah. you know so we don't don't have to and I, and I think that's gotten a lot of guys in trouble or put them in a tough position that you know took a long time to recover from them, especially if they were uh, flipping houses mm -hmm. you know like they they gotta get one in and get one out in order to generate cash to go yep. to the next deal or they start to lose some employees or some mm -hmm. contractors and they yep. got to keep everybody busy and then they don't have a business if they don't and that's just not us yep. we just don't have to do that it so makes sense then doesn't, doesn't put that kind of pressure on us mm -hmm. yeah and I, I i agree with that because like i feel like the flipping of the houses and stuff like i don't know we flipped we flipped uh we me and michaela have flipped two houses mm -hmm. And uh, each one I wish we would have kept, you know, yeah. and it's like, I don't know. So anyways, it's one of those things like I, f I feel like it's a little riskier because if you, again, if, if it doesn't sell, like if you're waiting on that one transaction, mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's a big deal. So, and that kind of leads into like uh, single family versus multifamily. So mm -hmm. do, which I know you guys own single families, mm -hmm. but majority of them are multifamily, aren't they? Yeah, um, definitely from a per per percentage standpoint uh -huh. too. Yeah, 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 sure. So I'm assuming you guys like those more, mm. or or is it just that's just kind of how it's rolled, like played out? I think it's a little bit how it's kind of played out. Okay. Um, when when I start looking at like long term, mm -hmm. um, I, I think the upside for single families gotten a lot better because of the, some of the things we talked about. That's that. true. That's true. I, I think uh, you know when you when you look at is what's crazy is you know i think i bought my first house when i was 20 22 mm -hmm. 22 23 and you know it was insane you know like my house payments well below what the average <coughs> car, car payment pay is now well shoot car yeah. payment was probably five years <laughs> ten six yeah, years ago for sure and uh you know everybody freaking out about rates i, I had a seven and three quarter percent rate mm -hmm. That's, that was normal that was a solid that, rate yeah. i was happy with yeah. it right now people are disgusted with that mm -hmm. uh but um you know that that starter home then and now you know is mm -hmm. more than doubled do you still have that house no no nope nope uh, um don't have that but um so with the thought of single family you mm -hmm. know like okay well what if history repeats mm -hmm. itself and it tends to do that mm -hmm. are these single families worth twice as much as we bought them for and you know and some of these single families were six or seven years in and they are you know, yeah and yeah. they're there and it's not going to take too much longer to, to get there yep and so when you really look at that like long term you know it, it kind of makes sense yeah you know so no and i agree with that because like i think we bought so me and michaela got married five years ago we've been together 10 so we bought i bought our we bought i bought a duplex um it was before we were married mm -hmm. it's like literally good you yeah, yeah literally um i think it was i think we were getting married in april and it was a new house new construction home okay mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember she was like, I don't really want to live in a duplex. And I'm like, okay, you know, and so I'm talking and I'm like, well, what if it's new? Like, you know, mm -hmm. and, I, and we had, we were, you know, we drive, I, that's the thing we do, we'll drive around and look at like houses and just stuff, even at that age, like mm -hmm. at that time. 
we drove by and there was a new build duplex and I'm like, oh man. So I called the builder up immediately. Like there was not even a for sale sign, it was a slab. I'm like, I know that's gonna be a, du like that, like everything mm -hmm. else is a duplex, that this is gonna be a duplex. And there's a local guy, uh, he was like, you know, small time builder, like just built, I think he had a couple lots left from like a long time ago. And I'm like, hey, and he's building two duplexes right next door, like next to each other. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, would you want to sell this? He's like, oh yeah. He's like, I'm like, he's like, well, I usually sell them singles, like one side on each. And I'm like, he's like, but I'd, I'd cut you a deal if you want to buy both. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Long story short, we bought it, right? And uh, we didn't have a realtor, nothing, very first property. Um, and I, I, I was trying to negotiate it, and he did not cut the price at all. <laughs> and I just like, oh my god, like, is this a good idea? Like, I, you know, I, I had just gotten into. This has probably been actually seven years because I think we, no, it wasn't, it was five. What year is this, 2020? Yeah, it had to have been five, it was 2018. So I had just kinda, I've been in insurance for about four, three or four years at that time and it's slower at that and Kale was still in school. Mm -hmm. So it was just all me and uh, I remember it took, it, it literally took everything, like all of my money that I had to buy that. Yeah. And um, so we bought it, everything worked out, and then I'm we're pushing, and I'm pushing by the one, because we bought it before that. Cause mm -hmm. I'm like, well, Michaela, and again, I know this is probably not right, but we were wanting to, at the, th at the time, I'm like, well, now you can go buy that other one, and you mm -hmm. can live there, because we're not married yet. You can mm -hmm. go do an FHA. And again, I think that's probably not right. I think you'd probably get in trouble with that. Yeah. But um, I was like, I think that could work. And it, we ended up not doing it. But mm -hmm. anyways, it was just a really cool story. So that's when we bought, like, yeah. that was our very first property. And then, you know, we were both hooked mm -hmm. on it. So I don't know where I was going with that other than that, like, that was our first property. And, oh, I guess that property now, it would yeah. be worth, I mean, that was a duplex. But that, I mean, it would be worth, I mean, not quite double, but yeah. it would have been, and that was just, like, literally just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Our single family that we live in now. We finished the basement, but that's worth, I mean, 40% more than what we bought it for back yeah. in 2020 or 19. You know, and everybody follows those national headlines and they mm -hmm. see all these, in, you know, increases and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm like waiting for yeah. the, everybody's waiting for the market to crash. Been hearing people say that for seven, eight years. Yeah. And it's like, dude. <laughs> yeah. And, and the one thing that they're not looking at there is inventory. Mm -hmm. Like if you go back to 2008 and look at the crash, yep. they were measuring and they, because that's what they did. The, mm -hmm. the normal inventory is measured in months. Okay. Like how many months of supplies? Like if we no longer add any oh, houses okay. to the market. Mm -hmm. There's you know, and you go back to in 2008 when that that housing crisis happened. There, <clears throat> they were. It was almost 12 months. Meaning, if there's no more houses built at the rate in which houses are consumed, it's going to take a full 12 months for that to be okay. gobbled up. Right? Gotcha. Right. They're measuring it in days now, not months. Still, mm -hmm. right now, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't quote me because sure. I'm not exactly for sure, but I know in the last sixty days, it, it was still like eighteen days. Yeah. So, if we stop building houses, mm -hmm. we're going to be out of houses in eighteen days. In two thousand and eight, that was in months. It was like twelve months mm -hmm. worth of supply. So, when you look at a crash, uh, yeah. the the fundamentals aren't there mm -hmm. to see a large dramatic correct actual, you know. and that's where like I think we were talking about before. Like mm -hmm. you could you could see a fluctuation, or maybe like it's probably a new thing that maybe has not happened before. Where it's been I don't a while. Know, it's I think been it's, a while. It's probably been a while since that. But you you go back to two thousand eight. Like it's nothing's the same. Nothing at all. Right? It, it wasn't crazy lending that got us to where we are right now. It was a supply and demand issue. Correct. And then all okay, the other if, things that were involved in that too, I'm assuming too, yeah. right? If it's the issue of supply and demand, has, has that been solved? And really, no, we, have, we haven't overbuilt. You know, Builders were building houses at a rate they had never seen mm -hmm. in 06 and 06, 07 and 08. And mortgages were giving loans to more people than they ever had before yeah. and people they never had before. Correct. You know, based on that. So that's what the buyers, yeah. and all of a sudden the, the music stopped and everybody left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there wasn't enough chairs. Yep, that uh, makes sense. And that's where you saw prices really come down because there was more houses than there mm -hmm. were buyers. And right now we still have more buyers than we have houses. Okay. So. Yep. Um, okay, I'm gonna ask a couple more questions real quick and then we'll wrap this thing up. Um, 
Another thing I was going to ask you is, um, so is there like a rule of thumb that you like with, um, like with, with what a property cash flows like per door? Is it, mm. you know, 200 bucks a door, 500 bucks a door? I mean, of course, of course the more, but is there a, mm -hmm. is there a number that's like, Hey, this is, we got to It's got to, it's got to do this for it to make sense. Yeah. We don't really look at it like a per okay. door standpoint. Not that that's not a great way to look at it, but <clears throat> what, I, excuse me. What I uh, what it seems to be there's there's four of us, mm -hmm. um, so that's always nice too. Like we all four kind of measure it up, and then yeah. everybody kind of compares numbers. Uh, and I tend to look at it more collectively of one does it cash flow? Mm -hmm. Okay, if it cash flows, then what do I think the property is going to do long term? Yep. And then there's so many variables Correct. in that of okay, where is it at? What's happening around it? Um, what's the likelihood of that changing mm -hmm. and you know we're being developed and then that area you know do I mm -hmm. think rents are gonna you know continue to go up and like when, when you start to think about that too you you talk about like oh, okay a starter home now and what a starter home is gonna cost 10 years from now mm -hmm. or 20 years from now you apply that same logic to rent you know like, yeah what makes you think rents gonna go down mm -hmm. I mean can it sure can it be harder to fill a property Sure, mm -hmm. and that's where the doors, the more doors gives you maybe an area to where you can get more aggressive in. Correct. Right, so. It almost eliminates of, some of the variables because if you have one or two people or whatever, then you have the other ones to make up for the loss. Yeah, yeah. if you've got a single family that becomes right. hard to rent, that thing is a dead loser right. every month that's not rented. Yeah. If you've got a multifamily, you know, like, well, if I've got a fourplex or an aplex or mm -hmm. an apartment complex, if if I'm at a 15% occupancy, mm -hmm. you know, can you, you're still generating something. Correct. You know, so you can get more aggressive in some areas than you can yep. in others. So that's where kind of overall, not really a number per number door. Number per door. Yeah. Just a okay. overall. Um, okay. That's good. That's good to know. I guess um, the last question I was going to have ask for you is like, what, like, does it, is it attractive for you guys to like, cause like when I'm looking at stuff and I don't know, like when I'm looking and, and, and you gave me the best advice, like, dude, you just need to start doing something. And it's like, I'm like, oh, well, we got to get the business here and like this. And it's like, so I, I think we're, we're about to get off the sidelines for the next like two to four months is I think is our goal. Um, because again, I do think you have to be strategic with it, right? Where you have sure. to have the mental capacity to, to do other things. And if you slack something else here, like anyway, so, with that being said, like I'm all like I'm looking at LoopNet, I'm looking at all these different things all the time, and I will always filter it out by most expensive to the least expensive. <laughs> For some reason, like I'm looking at, and I have no idea why. And I, well, I do. I, I it's all about because I, I, I just, I there's a, the apartment complexes is, is just such a, is it's such a tra it's so attractive to me. Mm -hmm. So do you have that kind of same like mindset with that or what what is your thought on that? Like yeah. what do you, what do you do? Yeah. One I, I know could, you look at that stuff too all the time. Oh, for sure. I, I could I get look at real estate like I know. like people do social media like, like scrolling. Like, <laughs> like that's what I do. Like I'll send it I, I you look at Michaela's like text message or I'll send it to a couple buddies and it's like property property property. Yeah. It's like I yeah. don't know. So yeah, no. Going. Uh, it's it's funny to, to hear that. Uh, so I know I'm not alone or insane there. Um, I might start sending you some, and you might just because like I sometimes I just want some way to say, "Wow, dude, that is awesome!" Like no one gives me any kind of response. Like Michaela's like, "Well, Michaela will," but like it's like, "Cool, you're gonna buy it?" I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, I will, yeah, yeah." No, like, wow, hey, slow down, yeah, slow like, down, yeah. easy. I just want to talk about it, right? That, now, that's what I, you know. I think uh, one thing, if I could give some advice to somebody, mm -hmm. not that I'm an no, I would love that Next expert year. by any means, but uh, one thing I felt like we were able to execute better at is when we really started to focus on like what's our target, okay, right? And okay, so then then you know because again I can look at I think all of it's interesting and and dig in and I also to him that guy that mindset of like yep yeah, that's buy it that's good I, I don't think there's bad real estate when you look at a twenty year thought process you know in the in the big scheme of things um, but you know understanding what your target like what is your competitive mm -hmm. advantage you know or what are you really good at and then okay that's going to lead you towards something else and for us it's not 
like I'm, I'm really not interested in a property that's just been single family or multifamily that has been remodeled and everything's perfect mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, great shape, you know, buy it, set it, forget it, you know, like that isn't us. Like I'm, I'll, I'll pass, yeah. you know, even if I think it's a good price, but just, you know, not, yeah. not our thing. Yeah. I want the, the statement you see on the listings of, uh, you know, um, needs updated, below market rents, As is. you know, long term tenants yeah. have never been, you know, and people have, so we've been there 10 years mm -hmm. and they thought it was easy, but they haven't raised the rent in 10 years either mm -hmm. because the same mm -hmm. person has been there and they haven't had to do mm -hmm. anything and the other person's happy with the, where the rent's at and that's why they're okay with nothing yep. being fixed. I want deferred maintenance, everything rough, uh, not been improved because that's our competitive advantage. Correct. So. I filter with your with that. your partners basically <clears throat> yeah. is what you're saying based on based on your guys's your guys's be, setup yeah be totally that different. makes sense be totally different for somebody if else. it was just you maybe or if it yeah. was just you and somebody else that mm -hmm. makes total sense yeah okay you know so if you're gonna be more of a it sounds like this is a negative phrase but not like a passive investor of like somebody like hey I want to take I want to diversify I want to mm -hmm. take some of you know what I'm contributing into my 401k or my savings and I'm gonna go put that somewhere else mm -hmm. and I want to put that in real estate then and you don't want to have the headaches and you're gonna hire a management company then your target would be the opposite of what gotcha. I'm looking at yeah you like know, a you, like a like a what, what do they call that like a uh, like a value add is yeah, I think I've seen that like you're, you know. you're gonna come in and you're gonna buy the stuff that I don't want to buy yep. which is completely remodeled mm -hmm. two vacant you know, it's a fourplex for example two tenants at market rent and two available mm -hmm. units that you know are up to you and you're like fantastic yep. that's good shape everything's nice I don't have to do anything mm -hmm. go plunk some cash there and hire a management company it's gonna be easy to find a management company yep. that wants to manage it because nothing needs to be done um, yeah that's that's an advantage so okay that leads me into this last one um, and this is like a personal question for you so like I think the exact same way mm -hmm. um, I Michaela she she likes um, like doing that kind of stuff now again I'm not we're not the most handiest like handy I'm not a very I'm, I can figure it out like YouTube it but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not that guy but um, it's still the, the whole process is still fun right I guess is what I'm saying so how why how come are are you guys or would you guys which I know the answer would be yes but like how come you guys haven't bought like a let's say a 60 unit apartment complex that needs to be rented and it's all the like all the or maybe not even that maybe it's a 30 unit I know Cardone always talks about make your first deal a 30 unit apartment complex mm -hmm. you go in you it, it, it hasn't been you know the rents have it hasn't been managed properly right mm -hmm. so you go in you do some rehab you do X amount of work then you go in and you raise the rents right by mm -hmm. X percentage because you just did all these things now you go back to the bank and now bam you just made your first million bucks on your first deal mm -hmm. right like you made a you, you brought out a million dollars cash and you know or whatever mm -hmm. leverage right and, and and now bam it's there yeah so what why haven't you guys done that uh, that's a great story I think for uh, Greg and I'm a big Greg Cardone I fan um, yeah and I love his phrase like if it has less than 14 doors live in it Okay, hold on though. I want to say something mm -hmm. back though, because I get—I think I might know where you're going to go with this. Is that it's like, well, you need to start somewhere. But I'm asking, like, you, like you yeah. guys have—you guys have done it, right? Yeah. Like, you guys are experienced. You're not just because that's the thing I'm thinking. I'm like, holy cow, if we do that, like, there is a lot. Like, that's a lot, right? Yeah. But with you guys, we're uh, we're getting there. I know. That's that, exactly where I was going to go. That's okay. that's literally the like our next steps okay. are to be able to move up into bigger mm -hmm. bigger stuff and by doing that we're we're have have me on in three years and i think okay. my answer is gonna be like well we did you yeah. know because uh, yeah. now I'm, we're doing 150 yeah, yeah. That, that's what we're after i i'm super excited to do some stuff of uh i really like the idea of finding existing structures that mm -hmm. you can convert to multifamily. Oh. i think is really interesting to me because yeah. i think i think there's not only a lot of money to be made there, but I think you can find those places that where developers aren't building. Uh -huh. Right when you start to see stuff that gets built, it's always on the edge, and things grow towards yep. it, and then things get developed up around it. And you can kind of see pockets of towns and areas kind of die off. And 
I think that's just because people follow the new stuff. Mm -hmm. And and I think affordable housing is going to be a huge demand and just going to get greater mm -hmm. and greater each year, especially for the next four to five years. So I'm in, that, that, that yeah. is kind of really interesting to me. To, to be able to take a commercial building that you convert to, to a multifamily, I think we pretty much so I think oh, something so like it has that. to be a commercial because that's what I was going to ask you is like how do you get around like the the zoning part because like if it's residential or single you know and it's not zoned for multifamily like you are gotta, you guys going through yeah, all that process because like, gotta, that's a you lot you got to go through the city to yeah. do that and there's a lot to learn there that mm -hmm. we, we still don't necessarily know but but we will and I, I think we can yeah but uh, Just yeah doing it those those are absolutely the things I think we're going to do I think. That's one thing that, like, if you watch a lot of these social media experts and stuff, and Grant Cardone, like, again, big fan, oh, yeah. big fan of him. Uh, love what he says, but, and, 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 I, and I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. no, I'm not knocking anybody that starts and mm -hmm. starts on that, but uh, <clears throat> I'd consider that, like, you know, a professional athlete. Correct. You know, like, hey, there's there's seven, 8,000 mm -hmm. high school athletes around here, and, like, Two of them are gonna, gonna be go pro. Yeah. <laughs> gonna go pro. Yep. And I would think that that's where I'd equate the first deal that your million Correct. dollar deal and it's a multifamily. But maybe I'm going at it wrong. Well, I and I think, like, I think it's easier for somebody because I I think I I I actually agree with with what he says one thousand percent. Right. Totally. And then I also agree with like everybody else that has like that's like so. There's people that are like all about it, and then there's other people like that's impossible. It's mm -hmm. like. Okay, but if you have the knowledge and you have all of the resources and you know, like, like you have the confidence to do that, like he's of course right. Like he, yeah. if he knew what he knew now, of course he would go back and and, and yeah. do the exact same thing. And and you can't you can learn and you can read all the books, you can listen to all these people, you know, be in the right rooms, all these guys. But mm -hmm. until you actually do something, like there's very few people that can just say, okay, let's roll. Yeah. You know, like you gotta have to get your feet wet at some point. I, I agree. I think and there's a there's a lot to be learned in like not getting things out of order. Correct. You know, if if you mess up, you know, the difference between messing up on a duplex <laughs> and a uh, sixty unit apartment complex different com yeah. different different sleepless the, nights. The there. recovery time is completely <laughs> yes. different for those two. Yeah. So uh, you know, and, and if you don't have that experience, for sure. You know. Um, that 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 I think is a difference. So yep. I agree. I think your your breakdown of that is actually perfect. Of with his knowledge, mm -hmm. sure, that's exactly 100%. what he do that. And I watched him on Undercover Billionaire, yep. uh, and super interesting. And that's what he did. Yep. But he had all that knowledge. Yep. Yeah. So I think uh, you got to get that knowledge too. Cool. I think that's a good place to end. That's good. I think like that's a. I feel like that kind of even goes back into the business, like business stuff that we talked about and everything mm -hmm. else. So that all kind of flows with everything so cool well anything else you want to say Bo man um, yeah I greatly appreciate having you I'd actually yeah. like to shoot um, referral your way and to talk a little bit about how I came to you um, and it was actually on an apartment yeah. complex okay yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was really interesting we we had um, a major carrier uh, on our apartment complex and for me and simpleton and logical, just no reason in the world why our policy was going to go up like mm -hmm. 70%. Literally, it was almost going to double. And uh, it was an older apartment complex and, and it was tough. I shopped at a couple different places and I eventually got referred to you. Mm -hmm. And not only you came in and beat the existing policy that was almost going to double, mm -hmm. but I think improved my coverages as well. Mm -hmm. And it was just your knowledge of what I was going through and, mm -hmm. and the property itself that led to that. So kudos to you guys and yeah. your team. Uh, couldn't be couldn't be happier, uh, which led to getting, everything else. Getting everything else. No, so. I appreciate that man. Like it's uh it's honestly it's crazy how like one little thing can like I've learned a lot. Like every time you talk I'm listening and uh, I'll say this to you because I was gonna tell you at some point, but like the other day when we jumped on the phone with all your partners, mm -hmm. dude. I was nervous, and I don't get nervous. I, I have not gotten nervous about an insurance conversation in a while. Yeah. And even with you, like, I was a little nervous the very first time. And I, I whenever you said, oh, I'm going to jump on the phone, like, I was like, okay, no big deal. And then when they all got on there, I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> so, like, I, I think it's great because, like, I know, I don't know, like, I know you guys 
I know I know the the things that we value here. Like I think that does mean a lot to you guys too. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Um, and it's just like I don't know. It's just great to have that kind of mindset and like-minded people. Except you guys have been doing it a little bit longer mm, and uh, yeah. have a little bit more expertise and wisdom with it. And it's uh, it's just really cool. So yeah, I appreciate sure. that, man. That, that goes right in the same thing too. Is finding good people that do good business and that got last. Exactly. So. Yeah. Cool, guys. Well, Bo, I appreciate you, man, a ton. I feel like this has been awesome. I um, had a couple of uh, camera difficulties, but that's okay. So episode 51, you guys, yellow colored glasses, Bo Thomas. Uh, it's been great. Appreciate you guys. Hey, thanks for having me. Awesome, man.